Well, here we are. We've reached chapter 31 of Proverbs. Very famous chapter. It splits up neatly into two sections. The first section is about the man who could be a great man if he listens to the word of his mother. That's the first part. And the second half of it is the excellent, the excellent wife. That's the one we most normally think about with Proverbs 31. But let's start with the first few verses, first nine verses about this one who could be a great man. And it, it, it apparently comes to us from his mom. And what does she say? What are you doing, my son? Great words. What are you doing, son of my womb? What, what, what did I do? What, what are you doing, son of my vows, my promises? my prayers, my commitments in life. And here's her concern. Number one, do not give your strength to women, your ways to those who destroy kings. Is, is that what you're living your life for, my son? For the intimate pleasures that can come from some woman? Watch it. You'll, you lose your opportunity to, to do great things if you get so entangled with someone that you get off track. What are you doing, my son? And who is this son? He's supposed to be a, a ruler at some point. It's not for kings, O Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine. Here's the second concern. The first was the, the intimate relationships with women that really shouldn't have been. The second was drinking too much. It's not for kings to do that or for rulers to take strong drink, lest they drink and forget what has been decreed and pervert the rights of all the afflicted. See, kings should be taking care of the poor and bringing justice to those who are calling out for help, right? And drinking a lot, well, that's, that's like an anesthetic for people that are dying. It says, give strong drink to the one who is perishing, because of the pain, you know, and wine to those in bitter distress. Let them drink and forget their poverty and remember their misery no more. It's not for you. You could be a great man if you don't go the way of women and wine. So what should you do? Open your mouth for the mute. Those who can't speak, you speak for them, for the rights of all who are destitute. Open your mouth, judge righteously, defend the rights of the poor and needy. See, this is the way we should be schooling up the young man. And then one day, maybe they would have an excellent wife, an excellent wife who can find. She's far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her and he, he will have no lack of gain. So you can't just look at the outward appearance and then move in the direction your body's telling you to go and think that everything's going to be all right. No, you want this woman of character, this excellent woman to be by your side so that you can trust her. And this will, this will be so much to you. You'll see the benefit of it. And then what we hear is just wonderful things about her wisdom, her diligence, her character in all sorts of ways, her generosity. Yeah, she She's at work and doing things in the right way. She cares about the ways of God, cares about those around her, cares about her family. And, and for that reason, her husband is freed up in order to do what he's called to do. Yeah, it says she looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. And her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also. And he praises her. So what does he say about her? He says, many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain. It comes and it goes, you know, it's temporary. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the gates. That's wonderful. So, you know, where do we find the fulfillment of these great longings of the, of the young man who could be a, the greatest of all kings and of his bride who would be truly a worthy jewel for her husband, greatly and highly valued? Well, we know the answer to that. You know, we know that we have found the Prince of Peace 
the king and head of the church, the husband of his glorious bride, the Lord Jesus Christ. And look, he's, he's not about getting drunk and having illicit relationships. Far from it. No. He went to the cross for us. He had the presence of heart and mind to do what only he could do. And, and what's he doing now? He's preparing for himself a glorious bride without spot or blemish or any such thing. Thank you, Father, for this wonderful theme at the end of this glorious book of wisdom, so practical, so useful and helpful for us. But now this wonderful theme, our great husband, Jesus, and and the destiny that we have as his church to be his glorious bride. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessings, friends.